There we go. You're connected now. Let's see. There you go. All right. Fantastic. Jeez. Well, just technical difficulties. What do you know? <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to some better light. Nah. And we can play better volleyball than we can do Instagram uh, <laughs> connections here. Rod's there, too. We got Rod. We'll get him at 230. But we got her connected. That's most important here. Perfect. Where are you at? You at home today? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. How's the kids? Good. Baby's taking a nap and got a beautiful day here in Oklahoma. Sweet. How hot is it down there right now? It's actually pretty cool. Uh, I would say today's probably in the 70s. Sweet. That's not bad yeah. for Oklahoma. Awesome. No, not at all. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us on. I appreciate you coming hey, my on. My pleasure. James and I have known each other for a long, long time, and this is a good chance. Oh, yeah to uh, get everybody connected with uh, some of the more national team players. Um, and uh, how did you get started again, James? Tell, give us a quick story. James, let me, I'll introduce James first, though. James is uh, one of our right sides, setters, middle blockers. He does about everything, sometimes outside. <laughs> Jack of all trades. Whatever you need him to do, he'll do. One of the fastest guys in the court. Uh, he's been in the 2016 games. He's played in three different world championships, many different Pan American games. You just got back from Brazil. You played in their opens down there, I think, over the Yeah, winter. it was a pleasure being down there. Yep. And you've been the uh, men's player of the year um, a few years back. Um, yeah, I, mean, I was, uh, I've been very fortunate. I worked hard enough and uh, earned it four times. Four times? I'm out yeah. Of, I'm out of sync. You're so dang good. <laughs> yeah, I try. You know, it's uh, it's all about hard work. So hard work, off time, like right, like what we're all going through right now. You know, putting your time now and it pays its dividends. Exactly. So how'd you get involved in sitting volleyball? I know. I think it was through the uh, Wounded Warriors, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, quick background: I was injured. I was hit with a roadside bomb in 2005. <clears throat> From there, did my rehab at Walter Reed, and there's a different different uh, military options and opportunities and that's actually one of them was through uh what is it one uh, where i met you and bill hammeter our director and women's head coach i met you guys and uh is it Lori? i believe was also with you guys yeah, i think so yeah yeah and met you start you playing what year was that uh I was injured 05 i met you guys in 06 and played a little bit then from there, just had fun, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed the group of guys and moved to Oklahoma the first time in 2007. Yeah. And then you just got back to Oklahoma, right, again? You re relocated back down there? Yeah, we moved uh, – my family, my wife, and my three boys, we moved to the state of Washington just south of Seattle. We moved up there to get close to some family. I <clears throat> uh, was up there for five years. And just recently moved back. It was uh, the traveling. All the traveling started putting its stress on the family. And, you know, wanted to play sports for as long as I can. <laughs> so keep the boys happy and uh, keep. Oh, be there. Picked up and moved. Nice. So, but, yeah, All right. Uh, so I got to ask because everybody wants. No, go ahead. You're good. No, I was gonna say, yeah, just working, just working, and it's paying off. Just because I, uh, yeah, I'm back here. I get to train with the guys and build to qualify. And so now you're in Oklahoma. You're waiting for. Uh, we're all waiting for the next qualifying tournament because of <laughs> yep. this. Because what many people aren't aware of was the week when everything started getting canceled. The NBA, the college basketball, was the same week that the U.S. was hosting the last qualifier for the last uh, sure. Paralympic team uh, seed to yep. whoever won that tournament in Oklahoma was going to go to the Paralympics. And that was the week that everybody started flying over and got canceled, right? Yeah. Yeah, we had uh, – there was going to be a total of eight countries – or no, I'm sorry, seven countries, including the U.S., that were competing for one spot. And, you know, the next thing you know, this – this whole thing shakes down, and you train, you train, 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 work hard mentally, physically, emotionally, and everything for these opportunities to play. And then 
you're sitting here now <laughs> waiting for the next opportunity. But then we find out the games get canceled. Or, sorry, not canceled, postponed. So they're still calling it the 2020 Tokyo Games that are going to be held in uh, 2021. Nice. Well, at least we know we're still going to be having them, I guess. But I called this you guys true. the day that uh, that transpired. And, man, I, I can't imagine going through that. I mean, I know oh. you guys did pretty well, but, uh, like, as a team. But, yeah, you know, you guys were hours from starting the last tournament to qualify. Correct, yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a good – Build up to it. We had we did the best we've ever done in World Championships. Uh, then, unfortunately, we played hard. We fought hard in, in the Pan American Games in 2019, but and took second. We lost to Brazil. We had a strong squad. Uh, they well deserved it. But um, and then we were going to fight it out with uh, the six other countries that were coming into play and get our spot there. And now what have you guys heard? Anything much yet? No, it's uh, it's hard to say just, just for the simple fact that nobody really knows across on the on a global scale what's going to happen and how this is all going to transpire and just end up trickling down. So during quarantine, I got to know, what's up with all the handstands? It's, it's, it's a what's new challenge. What's the deal? I love it. <laughs> what's the deal? What's the story behind the handstands? You know, uh, it was – I was sitting around working out and – quarantine then gym started shutting down and everything started closing and i was like all right what am i gonna do what am i gonna lift how am i gonna stay in shape and you know where there's a will there's a way so i started researching gym, doing more with gymnastics and a lot of these isometric holds just having some fun with it and i started doing more pull-ups and i looked at it and i'm like you know what i've never been able to do a handstand Let's try it. And I'm still working at it. <laughs> so where are you at? I know I saw this week you were getting there with some lifts. Your wall handstand, and I don't know if anybody, your challenge went through to put the uh -oh. Spider-Man handstand with the shirt. Oh, that was fun. Did anybody else take you up no, on that? No, uh, I had a couple of my buddies. I have a friend in Alaska I called out, uh, Chris Hardis. I called him out, and he did it, and he challenged some of his friends, and it was fun. Uh, I haven't seen anybody from the standing team, so was liking to see some of those guys do it. But uh, you know, it's you got to find in these times. I don't want to say dark times, but in these in this new age that we're all going through, you got to find something new to do. Yeah. And it's something new, something fun. And like I said, me being me being six five, it's uh, it's pretty, I think it would be pretty. It's pretty fun, pretty challenging to do a handstand. So I'm like. Learning spatial awareness and learning all that stuff is uh, pretty neat. <laughs> well, handstands are hard enough to do, let alone when your kids are antagonizing you to not do it and fall over. That's got to be, like, disheartening as a dad when I heard your oh, kids I know. It's yelling at you. <laughs> yeah, well, there was, a, there was one. I got it on my wife's phone where I'm doing a handstand and my kids are running laps underneath me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was actually just doing, I was practicing earlier today and I'm going to post a picture here in a little bit where my, right before nap time, my two year old was like, Oh, I'm going to come practice with you basically. And start doing handstands right beside me. <laughs> nice. So he's got it down already. Yeah. He's doing, he's a, he's a trooper, man. He's yeah. doing good. He's, yep. We call him, uh, yeah, we call him, uh, call him Bam Bam runs yeah. around. And, man, <laughs> it's crazy. So how you juggle your life with volleyball and family? Now that you're back it's in Oklahoma, it's probably a little bit easier. It's a lot easier. That that was the main reason for moving back is so I can keep everybody uh, keep everybody happy, and we can all work more towards the end result of playing volleyball as long as as long as physically possible. It's but it's uh it's fun. It's challenging. My kids are now eight, six, and two, so they're starting to understand a little bit more what's going on and how to how dad's life is and what I have to do to push forward and be the best that I can. Gotcha. And so, so but yeah. where's been the – since we're talking about traveling and playing, where's the uh, most fun place you've been to when it comes to traveling for volleyball? Oh, man. For volleyball, I know Poland was a blast. Poland's been a lot of fun, the crowd there. I mean, 
Guadalajara, when we went there, that was a great time. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a real good time. It's all about – it's hard to really pick one just because the team uh, – it's all about the team atmosphere. We travel a lot of this, a lot of the same guys travel, and we know each other, and we're able to make the events fun, or able to challenge and make each other laugh at the same time. So that's probably probably the best part about working with team sports is working with the guys as much as it as as much as it is an advantage. It's a, it's a disadvantage too, just because you're the same guys over and over and over again. And that's the interesting thing we were, I was talking about earlier this morning is that Team USA, you got players from all over the country. So usually when you're playing yep. on teams, you're more, you know, in that area and you kind of know each other. But sometimes it can be a kind of a real challenge to work together as a team when you have different personalities and, and all that stuff moving forward or just different kinds of people. So, right. you know, I know you've been on the men's team for a long, long time. Uh, 2007, yep. And how long uh, – I mean, how's that been going with the traveling and everything lately with all the players and such? Are the guys – I know the guys get along pretty well, but you have your times. But how do you deal with all that with the rest of the players? It's a, it's a, it's a constant – like with any, like with the sport itself, with volleyball, it's a uh, constant learning curve. You just – you work hard, and as long as you meet your teammates where they're at and you work – and you don't – work against them and you work with them that's probably the best thing that any athlete coach or fan or whatever can do you know work with the person that you're trying to be with or you're forced to be with and you don't have to be their best friend but you're their teammate you're their you're the person that you're with working towards a common goal right and that's what a lot of that's what the athletes see and that's how we have we have to work towards the common goal, and that's winning. And we talked about sitting volleyball this morning, and then we're taking this over today and next Friday. We're going to have the women on. So, what's the biggest difference that you like to share with people of, of what's different about sitting volleyball than beach or standing indoors? Um, I gave my opinion this morning, but I'd love to hear what you think is different with sitting, and maybe what can you carry over in sitting in standing or beach game yeah well i've been very fortunate i've actually uh i've played i've played sit, uh, just as an amputee i've played standing uh standing court and standing beach and the the one thing about sitting is the fact that you have to read and you have to understand the game so fast because when you go to hit or you have to or when the ball is being hit at you there's no, oh, I can move my feet this extra little bit to get to the ball. No, you have to be there because if you watch games and you see how fast the tempo of the game is, you have to see it, read it, and be there. As opposed to sometimes sometimes in standing, you can be a split second late or have a slow read and be athletic enough to get there. And that was the one thing that really helped me out whenever I transpired, tra transferred over to standing and playing is that, no, I can't jump the highest. I'm a below the knee amputee. Yes, sometimes my block is going to be there, but guys are going to hit over me or around me. That's a given. But I can read and I can see fast enough that I can get there and I can put myself in the right position before – before the ball gets to whatever the other team is doing and allow me to make a play on the ball. So besides on the court, what do you work on and how do you work on that speed? I was talking about that earlier. It's hard to explain the love speed and how fast it is unless you really are on the floor doing it. But what do you work on to make your brain work quicker or your body get to that spot faster when you're right. I've, I've never, I've never experienced a speed like sitting volleyball yeah. in a sport. I just, I, I never have. One, uh, well, for instance, I mean, just during this time, like I, uh, I stated earlier, a lot of what I'm doing to stay fit is calisthenics. You know, putting my butt on the floor and just raising up. You know, doing L sit. I posted on my Instagram. Uh, yeah, I did, was at the gym, had some parallel bars, and just pressing up hold it suspend in my body being able being able to control your body weight and move your own body weight is with joints that aren't supposed to be primary movers your shoulders they're not supposed to be primary movers 
our bodies aren't built like that. But understanding that and now developing to developing the right muscles so that you can make your body do what you want it to do and what you need it to do. So besides your working out with calisthenics, have you been touching any balls at home? Yeah, and if so, is, is it uh, been similar to at least get some ball touches in or not really? It's, I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate that my – I mean, I got tile and I got hardwood. You know, you can do, you can do some movement on the floor. Everything is very roughly simulated. Uh, my wife, the rock being she is, she helps me with whatever she can. She holds down the fort and – she, I'll, she'll toss volleyballs with me. She gets on the floor and peppers with me. Uh, my kids, my kids get on the floor and we toss balls around, you know. It's a big game for them, but I think I have to look at it from a different aspect. It's like, cool, this might be the only touches I get today. So they're playing around, and I'm just trying to keep it alive, having fun with them. But in all reality, I'm trying to think of, cool, this might be a bad touch off, a touch off the block or – a low pass or something and I'm trying to fall over and pop it up or use my foot to stab at it to kick it up. And then the hardest thing probably to simulate is any type of hitting, you know? So I go to the side of my house, I got a wall and hit it, you know, just hit down balls, hit down balls at the grass, <laughs> grass wall back at me. And that's funny because I, this morning when I was thinking about, you know, when I first started playing and uh, training in, in winter, Nebraska is snow and cold and, you know, yeah. you can't get into a gym somewhere. I mean, and we're seeing that again. People weren't able to get the gyms that just the basic things of touching a ball and hitting a ball <laughs> can get this is you where I so hit. far. <laughs> this is where I hit. I got grass. I got a wall. And I stand over here in the grass. And you got some open space. Yep. yep. And that's it. Volleyball then, training doesn't have to be complicated, does it? Nope. And like I said, with shoulder stability, there's my kid's swing set, and that side works for a pull-up bar. There you go. Nice. So, you know. So how far are you from the university there then now? Uh, only a couple miles. I'm very fortunate that, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm close enough that I can attend resident practices you know, a, when I first moved back, it was a it was a new process, just trying to see what we had to do whenever with resident practices, and then having to juggle that time with the kids. That was uh, that was fun to see to get that schedule set. So my wife wasn't overwhelmed with help getting the kids fed and getting them out to school while I'm playing volleyball. Right. You know, I'm in practice training, and then my wife's doing the real work, taking care of the kids, working hard. So we set a we worked we worked together and set a schedule to certain days I would go to practice, and our coaching staff worked understood it as well. So that was as a constant learning curve, as those athletes know that have kids. It's, always a learning curve <laughs> and especially everybody right now it's like everybody's going through it with my son's in sixth grade so i think it's like it's the best time for a, a kid to a certain extent is that you know right. younger kids it's challenging i know with parents at home trying to work and take care of their kids and at homeschool yep and homeschool and do all that yeah. stuff everybody's going through it it's not uh it's not easy not at all no 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 by uh I gave teachers credit before. Give them more credit now. <laughs> <laughs> That's for oh, sure. Man. That's for so. sure. Well, I saw the other day that USA Volleyball put out a quarantine house, and you were in house four with Katie and Fluke and Matt Anderson. Yeah, and that was touching. I think our house is way better than your house. No. No, come on. Why? We Cut. usually would dominate you guys. We got sure, Phil and Logan. It. We got Mr. Bring May. It. Like, and Soji is set. We're good. Oh, we're sitting. We're not standing. Well, you might win in sitting because you and Katie, yeah. but we got the rest of the camera. Yeah, of course. Right no, we're going to win. We're going to win. You're going to win? I think we're we going to win. Like a tournament where it's like a king of the hill where we all play indoor you know sitting what? and beach and see who wins out of oh, horses. That'd be great. You know what we should do is put those teams together for nationals. Yeah? Oh, that would so be which great. Which sport will we play, though? Which, which discipline will we play? All of them? Sitting. Sitting only? Yeah. No, I'm we play, we'll play sitting and standing, you know? 
Well, I'll tell you, we've got to play all three disciplines, and each house does, and you see who comes out on top. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Where, uh, it's going to be interesting where they're going to put a sand court in at nationals. The I'm sure you'll say volleyball. Outside, around, the, around the back, it's Minnesota. Well, they cancel <laughs> Minnesota. Maybe we'll go to somewhere warmer where we can be outside in May or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty hey, cool. Thanks, man. I don't know how I yeah. made the list. Some old gray hair guy over here made the house. Dude, over you're, a, you're a monster, man. We love having you on the court. We've been itching to get you back on the court. <laughs> I know. I get a couple of recruiting calls the other day. I hinted that I might play. Next thing you know, I got a few texts out of the blue. I said, guys, I'm good. I'm retired. I'm good. But I'll play. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Well, there's yeah, Roderick. Buddy. I don't think Roderick made a house. What's up with that? we got to give him oh, a for the next side. I don't know. Yeah, that's. That's the secret. That's the secret house, you know. That's how seven. Waiting. Yeah, keep them waiting in the wings, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> their team comes in. And I was like, "Where did this? Where?" <laughs> it's like sniper from the grassy knoll. It's like holy <laughs> mackerel. All right, I got to ask these questions. What's the hardest loss you had? Which I've been through one with you. My hardest loss of my life, and then what's the most uh, gratifying win that you've had? Oh. Oh, I got, I got four, four. hardest losses. Four losses. I can't name. I got. I, they're all four. Of these losses came by one team. Yeah, uh, I know who this is. <laughs> Brazil. Yes. Every time, every third year of the cycle, I got one. I got one in oh. What is it? Oh seven. Oh seven. Eleven. Ten. Thirteen. Sixty. Whatever. In 60, yeah. Every time. Those are the four hardest losses. So let me explain um, that to all the viewers out there. So basically each area or zone uh, has a tournament. Then you win that tournament, you qualify. And we are in the zone of North America and South America. And right now Brazil has been the team to beat. The last time we beat them was in 2003 to go to the Athens 2004 Paralympic Games. And we haven't beat them uh, since, so they keep having our number. We beat them in Guadalajara, but oh, we, we lost to them. In the, but we lost to them in the finals. Yeah, there's your there's your silver medals. All four four losses. Yep, you got them hung oh, up in a frame. Even yeah, I can't even look at I can't really look at mine too much. Constant reminder. Yeah. I think it's backwards for everybody. It says, play play like you're in first, train like you're in second, right beside all the silver medals. I like that a ton. Yeah. Constant reminder and thorn in my side. And some people that are happy to have a silver medal, I guess we sometimes uh, get upset about silver because it's meant so much to us to train for four years, and you need the gold medal to go to the Paralympic Games. Um so silver isn't bad. I completely understand for all the viewers that are watching, but to us crazies that uh, are all in it to win it, <laughs> silver is uh, not too much fun. No. Four years, you, you train four years for three opportunities. Yep. Four Ten years. in games, world championships, and the last qualifier. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Well, what's the most fun win then you've had? I got mine right here. Look, I got to show you mine. I still got yeah, what you got? I still got a picture on my desk right here. I think Roderick's on here. Do you see that? Yep. This was against Serbia in 2010 in Oklahoma at World Championships. It was a five-set match. I don't know why it was so emotional, but it was the most fun match we played. You're right in the middle. You're just behind me, number eight, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're, oh, yeah. Right, you're right in there. There's James here. Roderick's <laughs> coming up next right there. So an yep. anchor – one of our closest friends here, um, LaForest, man. I'm so sorry. He's, that was a, that was a hard call I got last year. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. that was a hard one. For those who don't know, Edgar LaForest passed away from uh, cancer. Yeah. Passed away from cancer. It was very unfortunate. So try, it was hard. I tried to scrounge up and get down there for the family, send my condolences. But, you know, it's, it was one of those things. Yeah, so it was a tough time to send. Ready the same. We all tried to get down there, and just didn't work. But no, yeah. So, so where's the most fun win at? Oh man, most grat most fun gratifying win was uh, 
When we qualified for Rio. Okay. When we qualified for Rio, uh, we still lost to Brazil in the finals, but <laughs> we made it to the finals. Uh, and so real quick to break it down, um, the host nation, if you don't know, the host nation gets an automatic bid to go to the games. So for the 2016 games in Rio, Brazil had the automatic bid. We played, we played Canada in the semifinals and beat them in a good hard match. It was a four-set match. But, and then we played Brazil in the finals, but since they already had their bid, it was irrelevant who won, whoever they played was going to get their, get that bid. So when we, so that was probably, yeah. Yeah, that, not pause, think about it. Yep. Straight cried on the court. So happy. Cried happy tears. I've cried plenty of sad tears of, uh, oh yeah. In there, but yeah, happy tears are good tears. Oh yes, I want to see the I want to see the McDonald's tattoo. No, oh, it's still it's still going. There it is. There yeah, it is. McDonald's got a cheeseburger. You can't have it without some French fries. <laughs> <laughs> see the things we know about each other. Everybody I know. know about. There you go. <laughs> it's uh, it's been fun, man. I was sad to hear that your turn. You had uh. Your tournament didn't happen this past year. Yeah, it was really sad. It just, I don't know. I think it was a timing thing and a lot of just weird things going on with everything and this COVID-19. It just didn't happen. But James has made it up to Omaha many times. So for the people in our region that are going to come play next year, I'm sure you yep. see James around. And Especially now they know Oklahoma. Yeah, you're, you're close. Come up with uh, Mr. Regan and uh, you guys will have a, a great uh, a great team. So, yeah. Yeah, so what do you want? You got like about a minute, two minutes left. What do you want to uh, share with everybody else about uh, that? Anything that you want to tell them about sitting volleyball or uh, anything that you um, need? Well, I mean, it's a great sport. It's a lot of fun. Nationals is a uh, great time if you make your way out to uh, adult nationals. Come by the court. Put your team. Put your team in. Also, come play. You can sign up as an individual. Uh, Elliot Blake will get you on a team. And it's a lot of fun. It'll give you a new perspective of volleyball. And then when you go back to play standing volleyball, it's going to be a lot easier. You're going to be like, oh, <laughs> this game just slowed down a whole lot. I don't have Zach up or Brent tagging me with a ball six feet away. <laughs> yeah, we got, some, uh, we got some youngsters out there. They got some cannons on them. But, you know, we just got to put big blocks in front of them. We get some standing national players out there, some uh, some retired standing national players. Kevin Barnett. Hit. Nice catch. Up. Nice catch. I know. For real. It's some setter's hands. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we well, get some – Well, what's it like playing against a seven foot six person from Iran? Oh, my gosh. That's – I wish he was seven foot six. He stands at eight foot even. What? He's grown? It no, he's straight stands. Yep. Stands eight, foot? At eight, eight foot. It is ridiculous. I've watched so much video on that guy and show that video at my university when I teach, but it, I can't even imagine playing against that. Oh, his, yeah, he put his face is above, like above the net. I'm like, we're sitting, right? We're sitting. <laughs> he reaches up and I'm like, he's got a good foot and a half over me. Two feet over me, and I'm like, seriously? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how anybody stops that. Yeah, to give you a good idea, the libero, the Iranian libero, has to jump to high five him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they measured, and his when he sits down to the top of his fingers, it's like six one. Reach. Yeah, sitting reach. So, so when he's he sits, so he's sitting on the he, ground, reaching up. And it's like six foot one. <laughs> and mind oh, you cool. guys that are watching this, the men's net is 45 and a quarter inches high. So what's six foot? Uh, what's the, uh, why am I, six foot is 72 inches? Yeah, 72. So he's reaching 30 to 40 inches above the net? Yeah. <laughs> and we're sitting. We're sitting. <laughs> and so you can't jump. You can't, like, get higher. You're just, whatever you sit and reach is oh, what yeah. you sit and reach. It's, oh, yeah. There's no training. 
That's and that's the great thing about that's the great thing about sitting volleyball. Also, it completely levels the playing field. Cool. Good for you if you got a forty inch vertical. Let's sit. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. What, let's see what you got. What kind of hands you got and ball control? It's all. And again, if you watch Iran play. I'm going to have to let you go now, and we'll get James on here. But you watch Iran and Bosnia play the top two teams in the world. They don't miss a pass and miss a ball control oh, it's... ever. It's the most sickening thing to play against because it's – if you want to see pure ball control, you'll watch some fat guys absolutely control the volleyball Just like you've never dimes. seen touched. Just yeah. dimes. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Before we go, i got to give a big shout-out to my wife. Remember those people that are married, respect – the people that support you couldn't do it without her. Yes, I hear you there, brother. So well, it was great seeing you. Let's catch yes, up sir. here soon. All right, brother. Yeah, most definitely. We'll um, we'll have to figure something out after this COVID thing goes away, and hopefully get you down to beautiful Oklahoma, play some golf or something, have some fun. Cross That's training. I'm looking forward to watching you guys play, and I was going to play some golf in March, but you guys are doing yeah. it next year. We'll be down there. All I'll right, talk yeah. To you before that, all right, brother. Yeah, most all right, take care. And, Thanks again, uh, yeah, James. I'll be doing some uh, – I'm doing a USA Volleyball uh, takeover ne uh, next week. Next week? Be, uh, yeah, next week's going to be Thursday or Friday. So keep your mind open for that. We'll be doing some Q&A and some other fun stuff as well. Awesome. You'll, we'll check in. You'll get to see a little bit more of my training. Love it. I want I want a handstand by next week. All right, I'm going to do it. You're going to see. I'm going to just post the camera, and it's going to be fun. On live. I want to see it. Make it happen. Oh, it's going to be crazy. So <laughs> – all right, man. We'll take care. Thanks again for inviting me. Great Plains region. Awesome stuff. Keep going. And we will uh, we'll get together and have some fun times. Sounds good, James. Thanks, man. Not a problem. Take care.